Good morning, I welcome you to Zion. I thank you for being here on behalf of Evelyn and family, for those present and for those uh, watching online. May God bless our time of, of a worship together as we celebrate the gift of life eternal which God has granted to his servant, Kurt Sigelski. We make our beginning hearing the words spoken over us in our baptism. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We continue with the first congregation hymn, Amazing Grace. Baptism, Kurt Richard Sigelski was clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness that covered all of his sin. St. Paul says, do you not know that all of us who've been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might be united and walk in newness of life. For if we've been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Psalm 23, obviously one of the most, maybe the most familiar psalm in, in the whole 150 psalms, uh, one that uh, I know I shared with Kurt and Evelyn a number of times, uh, we read this responsibly by verses. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And we pray. 
O God of grace and mercy, we give thanks for your loving kindness shown to Kurt and to all your servants who, having finished their course in faith, now rest from their labors. Grant that we also may be faithful unto death and receive the crown of eternal life through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first next scripture reading is being read by Joseph Paulson uh, from 1 John chapter 1, verse 5. It, powerful reminders of how God sees into our heart. He knows when we're being deceptive. He knows when we're real. He assures us of his grace that forgives our sins. 1 John chapter 1, verse 5. This then is a message which, which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanseth us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My little children, these things I write unto you that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And I invite you to please rise to reading the gospel out of respect for Jesus who spoke these words from John chapter 11, beginning with verse 17. Then when Jesus came, he found that he had lain in the grave four days already. Now Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem, about 15 furlongs off. And many of the Jews came to Martha and to Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, whatsoever you will ask of God, God will give it to you. And Jesus said to her, Your brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said unto him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated as we join in singing the comforting hymn, When Peace Like a River. Oh, 
Gracious Heavenly Father, you are the Lord of life. You give physical life, yes, and that's a rich blessing, but you give spiritual life in Christ an even greater blessing yet. We thank you for the life, physical life and spiritual life, both that you gave to our brother Kurt. We invite you, O Holy Spirit, to be present, and may you accomplish within each of us what you desire this day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Grace, peace, and mercy be multiplied unto all of you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Words of reality, the Lord has given, the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of our Lord. Words of guidance, uh, Kurt who enjoyed the outdoors and when people grieve the death of a loved one, we have the tendency to look down and yet here, the psalm writer reminds us to look up, and he tells us why. I'll lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, who made the heavens and the earth. Nature reminds us of who the Creator is. And words of comfort. When Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled, you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. I'm going to prepare a place for you. And I will come back to take you to be with me, that where I am there you may be also. And that happened on November 11th, when the Lord said it's time to come home, Kurt. Life would be very sad and a very dreary existence if we had nothing to look forward to. Because of that, we attempt to create temporary events to bring some excitement, some joy that gives us some energy to get through the dreary days of life on earth. And dreary days are very real when you're sick, and uh, for Kurt, the last couple of years, very limited. Kevin, Dad, so much appreciated the, the efforts you made to get him out to hunt and fish. It gave him much to look forward to. So we create temporary events. It may be that fishing or hunting trip. It might be the purchase of a new truck. It might be a vacation, a Friday night out with some friends. It might be the temporary event of just looking forward to a wonderful meal prepared by an excellent cook. Such things gives us hope, something to look forward to. But the hopes and joys and excitement of the things I've just talked about are short-lived. The vacation comes and goes all too quickly. The fishing or hunting trip is fun, but soon over. The effect of that new truck wears off when it ends up in the shop for repair. And that super scrumptious meal is awesome, but in less than an hour it's gone. Then it's back to the regular work routines of life. And we try to dream up some more things to look forward to. And none of those things that we come up with bring lasting peace and joy. There, of course, is nothing wrong with having God-pleasing adventures unless they become the primary reason as to why we live. What a sad, dreary, and hopeless existence our world would be if it just revolved around the things I just mentioned. That would be a life not worth living, for there would be no lasting joy, no lasting hope. 
But thanks be to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the life of a Christian has joy, has hope, and has much to look forward to. Disciple Peter, in his writing from 1 Peter, said this, and these words are printed in your bulletin. He wrote, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again into a living hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that fades not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time, wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold, that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen you love, and whom though now you see him not, you believe, you rejoice with joy and unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Peter says we have a living hope, we have an inheritance that will never perish, spoil, or fade away. That description is quite different from the temporary hopes and joys I mentioned at the beginning of the message. Living hope means it's ongoing. It does not die out. It never disappoints. Inheritance is something we don't earn, we don't deserve. It's freely given to some, by someone who loves us. It's freely given because of whose we are, who we belong to. And this inheritance Peter writes about, he says it's indestructible. It will always be. There's nothing in all of life that I can think of that's indestructible that always will be with the exception of what Peter writes about in this text. Peter's describing for us the gift of God, which is the goal of the Christian's life. This gift is eternal life in the presence of Jesus, and in him we greatly rejoice. We greatly rejoice because this gift is reserved for all those who confess faith in Jesus as their Savior from sin and from death. No one can take it away from a believer in Christ. We greatly rejoice because it's not dependent upon our earning it or deserving it. And what a relief that is because we could not earn it. We do not deserve it. The pressure's off of wondering, have I done enough? Am I good enough? Am I acceptable? It's God's free gift earned for us by the life, the suffering, the death and resurrection of Jesus. And this gift is given to anyone who believes in Jesus as their savior from sin, death, and hell. We greatly rejoice in this living hope because Jesus for us in our place paid our debt of sin and conquered death by his resurrection from the grave. The resurrection of Jesus is the foundation stone of the whole Christian faith. In other words, if Christ did not rise from the grave and defeat death, then we're all helpless and hopeless, and all of humankind is headed to hell. But we participate in Christ's death and resurrection through what is called a new birth that is received in baptism into the body of Christ. Because of Christ's resurrection, we live with a living hope. And certainly, Kurt's dead body that lies before us will rise again back to life in the last day when Christ comes back in all of his glory. We can even greatly rejoice in the midst of grief. When we're saddened that your husband, your father, your grandfather and friend has died, yes, you will miss him, but yet there is joy in that Kurt believed in Jesus as Savior. And so now his soul resides in the presence of Christ. During the past two and a half years, I got to know Kurt pretty well from monthly visits at home, hospital, nursing home. I'm not giving away any secrets when I say that Kurt didn't necessarily live the model Christian life. Pastor Guy and I both had opportunities to share God's word with him, both law and gospel, which the law shows us our sin, the gospel points us to our Savior. 
The good news is that God the Holy Spirit was very active through the word of God that, that uh, we shared with him, that he read on his own. And it told me that the Spirit was active. For example, quite a few times he said to me, Pastor, I'm a sinner. I've done some pretty rotten things in life. And do you think God's going to accept me? Each time that opened the door for me to share God's amazing grace with him, to speak the truth where God's word does say, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. I mean, we all sin and we all justly deserve damnation, but God comes along with a gift. As we talked about before, a gift isn't earned, it isn't deserved. It's freely given to us by someone who loves us. And God loves us. The gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And as we heard Joel read earlier, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all our sin. A number of times Kurt talked about what he had learned in confirmation. That plus a guilty conscience told me the Holy Spirit was active in his life and had led him to repentance. He very much desired communion every time I saw him. In fact, one time I almost forgot, and he said, wait a second, didn't you come here to commune me? I said, yeah, I did. As we heard the reading from 1 Peter, the power of God that keeps us in faith is God's word and holy communion. The last time I visited Kurt, and Evelyn was there too, I was wearing one of these bracelets that we have at Zion that say, God's got this, and Kurt said, what do you got on your wrist? And I explained it, and he said, can I have it? And I put it on his wrist, and I said, as you come closer to death, keep that thought in mind. God's got this. The blood of Jesus has covered your sin. You're acceptable. He has paved the way for you. Kurt's health trials refined his faith, brought him back to the foundation of his faith in Jesus. Thanks be to God that he gave Kurt ample time to reflect to repent, cling to the cross. So I urge you, don't apathetically allow Satan to lull you to sleep spiritually, thinking, well, see, God gave my friend, my relative Kurt, time to reflect and repent and cling to the cross. I've got time yet. But many people aren't given that latter time in life to do that reflecting. That's obvious as we live in this time of COVID, suddenly death comes quickly. None of us has any guarantee that we're gonna see the light of tomorrow. That's why we need to live each day of our life prepared to meet Jesus. Don't take this most precious gift of Christ and his love for you for granted. Keep your eyes focused on the cross of Christ and so have the peace, the joy, the comfort of a living hope Towards the end of that Peter reading, there was a definition of faith. Though you have not seen him, meaning Jesus, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him. That's what faith is. Jesus and heaven are just as real as you and I, living and breathing, seated here today. There's no more important question in all of life than the one Jesus asked Martha in the gospel reading. He said to her, I am the resurrection, the life. He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? He asked Martha. And she responded with a profound statement of faith. So I end this message asking each of you, do you believe this as well? Amen. Almighty God, your word is cast like seed into the ground. Now let the dew of heaven descend and righteous fruit abound. Amen. We continue our worship with the singing of the next song, the solo by Bella and Christ alone.
And let us pray. Lord God, our Father, you raised Jesus from the dead. You knit your chosen people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus, our Lord. Give to your whole church in heaven and earth your light and your peace. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life, and so pass with Jesus through the gate of death and the grave to our joyful resurrection. Give to the family of Kurt and to all who mourn comfort in their grief, sure confidence in your loving care that casting their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Help us, we pray, in the midst of things we admit we frequently don't understand, to believe and find comfort in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the certainty of life everlasting. Receive our thanks for Kurt, for the blessings you gave to him. Thank you for the blessing he was to family and friends. Bring us at last to our heavenly home that that with Kurt we may see you face to face in the joys of paradise. These things we pray in the precious name of Jesus who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And Jesus said to Martha, I am the resurrection, the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Lord, now let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in sight of every people. A light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And we join in singing the last hymn, How Great Thou Art.
And um, this time we'll have the brief committal part of the service. We pray, merciful Father and Lord of life, with whom live the souls of those who depart in faith. We thank you for the blessings of body and soul you have granted our brother Kurt, whose earthly remains are laid to rest. Above all, we rejoice at your gracious promise to all your servants, both living and departed, that we shall be raised from death at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The ashes of Kurt uh, we commit to the ground, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, and the sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, who will change our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body by the power that enables him to subdue all things to himself. May God the Father who created this body, may God the Son who by his blood redeemed this body, May God the Holy Spirit, who by holy baptism sanctified this body to be his temple, keep these remains to the day of the resurrection of all flesh. And we pray, Almighty God, by the death of your Son, Jesus Christ, you destroyed death by his rest in the tomb, you sanctified the graves of your saints, and by his bodily resurrection you brought life and immortality to light, so that all who die in Jesus abide in peace and hope. Receive our thanks for the victory over death and the grave that Jesus has won for us. Keep us in everlasting communion with all who wait for him on earth and with all in heaven who are with him. For he is the resurrection and the life, even Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Receive the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his favor upon each of you and fill you with his peace. Amen. We are dismissed to go outside for the military rites. Morning, guys. We are here assembled to pay a lasting tribute of respect to our departed comrades. When our country called, Kurt answered. Self was forgotten in the cause of the greater good. As a brave man, he marched away with an abiding faith in his God, his country, and his flag. The red of our flags made redder still by his heroism. The white more stainlessly pure by the motives which impelled him. And in the starry field of our banner, the blue has been glorified by his service to American ideals. Parade, rest. Comrade Chaplin invoked the divine blessing. Let us pray. May the Lord our God bless all present here to remember those who lived and died to preserve liberty and freedom in our nation and in the world. May the Lord our God remember all those who sacrifice gave this nation its greatness and progress. May our memory of those who served in the armed forces be an honorable one, full of thanksgiving to the Lord, and remember with love and mercy those who died in service of our country. Our departed comrade of the Air Force no longer uses the arsenal at his disposal to defend or bring the fight to the enemies of our country. Our departed comrade is in the hands of, hands of our Heavenly Father. He will be laid to rest. Let us cherish his virtues, learn to imitate them. Reminded by the place, he feels no more that our ranks are thinning. Let each of us be ready to take his place in the great review hereafter with the faith that the fraternity which is on earth and in heaven remains unbroken. May we depart in peace and love and charity with our neighbors as we are joined together in the common goal of service to our God and country. This we pray in the name of our great captain, Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. Honor guard, hit, hit. Rifle squad commander, take command of your squad. Rifle squad, orders.